name is Cactus Gone Carne. Welcome back to the only YouTube cooking show that you need to be watching, Cactus Cooks. Now, uh, same as the last video, this is kind of sort of uh, along the lines of party food to go along with the rumble that's happening at the end of the month. If you don't know what that is, the Royal Rumble, uh, the wrestling, blah, 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 I explained in the last video. Anyways, what we're going to be doing today is what I'm going to be calling Hacksaw Hamburgers in honor of the first person who ever won the Royal Rumble, Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Now, these are just sliders. Pretty simple. Um, there's only a couple ingredients you're going to need. Uh, first things first, take your oven, set it to 350 degrees uh, to bake, not to broil or anything special like that. Just bake and uh, and let it go while you're mixing everything up. So we're going to take a look at the ingredients and we're going to go from here. So the hardware that you're going to need is a... Well, essentially you want a, a deep pan that's about the same size as the buns that you're going to be using. Now, I've got some Hawaiian sweet buns like this, dinner rolls like this, and I've just cut them like this, just straight across, and um, set those aside for later. You don't need those in the first step. Off of there. Now, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be taking the meat and pushing it in here. So I'd also recommend some parchment paper to go in there first because you're going to cook the meat first and then you're going to put the buns in. But that's that's later on. So you need yourself two pounds of ground beef. Okay. Now uh, I'm using extra lean. You can use whatever you feel like. You just have to dump the liquid out afterwards. Um, extra lean won't give you that much because it's extra lean. But, uh, you know, whatever. You're still going to have to dump some liquid out. You need yourself two tablespoons of butter melted. So you're going to brush that on top of the buns afterwards. But that's, uh, again, that's, that's getting too far ahead. You need yourself some sliced cheese uh, to put on those buns. And it recommends onions, but I don't really, uh, I don't really want onions on my my sliders. It's not really what I'm looking for. I'm looking for some sweet, some sweet pickles, or bread and butter is is what uh, Americans know them as. And you know, one or two per per burger kind of thing. Slap them on there, and you'll be fine. Um, first things first, though, we're gonna grab our beef and grab yourself a glove. If you watched my uh, top 10 things you need in the kitchen, you'll understand why I'm saying a glove. If not, all you need to get is a glove like this so that you can handle your meat and handle your spices with your other hand. Because that's what we're going to do. We're just going to spice up our meat. So I've got some salt here in my handy little salt container. I'm just going to take a couple good pinches. It may look like a lot now, but uh, it'll mix through. Remember, you've got two pounds of hamburger here. I want some pepper. Freshly ground right on top. I'm just eyeballing these. I'm not... don't have actual... Uh, actual measurements for you. So whatever you feel like is enough. I've got some garlic powder here and a handy little shaker. Make sure we get all that on there. Now these are the spices that I want to use. You don't have to use the same spices as me, but um, you know it's just whatever flavors you enjoy. If you want some Greek seasoning, put some Greek seasoning there, some Italian seasoning, whatever. And uh, make sure you mix it in thoroughly. Now there's all one little secret ingredient I'm going to put in here. Again, you don't have to do this, but I am. Is uh, <laughs> Worcestershire, as everybody pronounces it, Worcestershire sauce. So just a couple, uh, couple dabs of that in here, all over the top. It's fine. And. Uh, Get that nice and mixed. And like I said, glove hand so you can do your meat stuff. You know, if you've got kids at home, fuss your kid up, whatever. You know, make sure you're paying attention to them if they're 
suitor falls out, they need a bottle, you can hold it with your other hand, you don't have to get meat all over it. Your phone rings, you've got that extra hand to, uh, you know, to do it with. That's my oven. So, uh, my oven's special, so I'm going to leave it for a little bit. I'm not going to uh, put it in right away. I've got a handy thermometer in there. And sometimes it doesn't reach the temperature right away when it beeps because uh, it's supposed to be one of those fast setting ones, but it doesn't really work that well. Usually when they're fast setting, they don't actually reach the temperature that they need to right off the bat. So just leave it for, you know, a couple extra minutes and it'll be fine. So I'm going to take my glove off. And grab myself my baking sheet. Oh, with the parchment. Grab myself another glove. Essentially, you just want to take your meat and push it into all corners of this baking sheet in a nice thin-like layer so that it cooks nice. I'm just going to pound it down. Now, like I said, I'm using the parchment so that I don't have that big of a cleanup to do. Um, you don't have to if you don't want to. If you want the uh, the meat bits to flavor your your buns, you go right ahead and you do that. But uh, I think it's just going to make my bun soggy, and I don't want to do that. So try and get a nice, even, flat layer. something like that and put it into your oven put it in your oven to bake for 20 minutes and once that beeps you have to take it out and you're gonna have to remove your meat from the pan to continue on so once we get there we'll get there all right so we have our beef out of the oven this is after 20 minutes it just kind of looks like a gray blob right now but uh, that can all change. So just, if you use the, this paper method, just take it out and set it aside. You might, uh, I don't know, wipe that down. I think it's just condensation, so I'm not going to worry about that too much. So get your buns. Take the top off your buns and try your best to stick the whole thing in here. Now, my buns are a little bit bigger than I needed them to be, but that works just fine. So then, what I'm going to do first is, actually, you know what, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put down my cheese. as a nice barrier between your bread and your pickles. So this fits quite nicely. I'm using just regular old cheddar. Um, I like the you know sharp taste of old cheddar. It's always my favorite. And uh, that's just me. You can use whatever you feel like. Some matzah, some marble, like I said, whatever floats your boat. And That seems good enough. I'm going to just add my pickles. Just a thin little line of them across the entire thing here. You don't want to double up on these too much. Like I said, these are just bread and butter pickles and they're quite sweet. And they'll go well in contrast with your cheese and what have you. If you want to put the onions on, you go ahead and you put onions on. Maybe a little pearl onions, whatever you feel like. So that's that. 
Then, what you want to do is you want to get your meat brick. Now, it, it looks quite lovely, but uh, get your meat brick on top there. And then get your top of your buns. Now, me, I'm going to add another layer of cheese just so I can have everything kind of stick together. So, just right on top of the meat here. So, bear with me. Now, my meat is still warm. It's not, uh, I didn't let it cool at all. But what you're going to do is once you've finished putting the top on, you want to... That's right, plenty of cheese. Once you get your top on like this, get it all nice aligned, in a nice order, whatever. Okay, I'm just going to squish it down a little bit. You don't have to do that, that's just what I'm doing because I've got a lot of meat in here. Get yourself your butter melted and just brush the top of it. Just like this. Now, it, the original recipe suggests sprinkling on some sesame seeds on top of this. But I don't really, uh, that's just an added thing. I don't, I don't really see it making that big of a difference. If you want sesame seed buns, you go right ahead and you get yourself some sesame seed buns. Maybe some uh, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions. Whatever you feel like. So, uh, I'm just going to get it all nice and soaked in so you have nice buttery tops. That's probably good enough. And, uh, Take it all and slap it back in your oven for another 20 minutes. When it comes out, it should be fully cooked and ready to go. Just cut it all up into whatever and eat it. So we'll look at that after it comes back out of the oven. Okay, so this is it out of the oven after the last 20 minutes. Now, apparently, the way it looks in the camera, it looks burnt. But it's not. It is actually quite nicely browned on the top. So get yourself a nice knife and just cut along the regular sections of your buns. It's really very simple. You should have 12 nice sliders, or as I like to call them, Hacksaw hamburgers. Now, these are perfectly cooked on the inside. You got your cheese, meat, pickle, cheese, and mmm. Those taste delicious. This is great for any party that you're going to host. Me, like I said, it's going to be the Royal Rumble at the end of the month. And, uh, these aren't going to last very long, I can tell you that much. So you can make more, or you can just order in a nice pizza, or what have you. But uh, those are Hacksaw Hamburgers. Uh, remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you in two weeks. One last little bit on these hamburgers. After I closed out, um, I've gotten to about the middle of the hamburgers and they are just a tiny wee little bit pink. Now that is 100% okay because this is ground beef. If it was anything else, if you mixed it with pork or whatever, then I mean get rid of that immediately. But because it's beef, you can have it a little bit uh, rare like that. If you want to make sure it's all cooked, leave it in the oven for another maybe five seven ten minutes something around there and it should be a hundred percent cooked on the inside to whatever you feel like now that's 40 minutes in the oven is what I put it in for I think I had a little bit of uh, too thick of a spot in the middle and that's why mine turned a little bit pink so 
like I said, maybe five, seven, ten minutes, something like that, and the whole thing would have been done 100% perfectly. But it's okay for me. Um, I like my burgers a little bit uh, rare, which is just fine. So uh, there's no health issues there anyways because it's beef. So just so you guys know, just so you guys are aware.